Welcome back to Upset Tactics. Today, uh, once again, as always, <laughs> no, I say today like he's always here. Um, I'm joined by Gareth, and uh, Gareth has had quite the summer. He spent nearly every week away, weekend away, as far as I'm aware, at tournaments all across the country, right? Yeah, been doing a lot of travelling, been doing fairly well at tournaments. Um, so this is uh, like the last month and a half, two months mm -hmm. um, of at least the stuff that I came out of the, the, the events winning. Um, so, it, so why don't you take us through one we go left to right. So starting off, I went to the LGT in September, um, went to the RTT on the Friday, which was a one day, three round event. So just, just for, so everyone at home, London GT. Yep. RGT? RTT. RTT. Uh, Road Trader Tournament. Road Trader Tournament. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I am. I, he's the competitive one. I'm, I'm not. I, I, yeah. It's I a three round, one day event. Um, I went 3 and 0 in that event after playing Space Wolves, Sister Battle, and Chaos Knights. Um, so I won the event there and with my Dreadnought spam list. Mm hmm. And then at the main five round event, I went three wins, one draw and one loss. Mm -hmm. After uh, round one was sisters, uh, which I won. Round two, oh, this is going back some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, oh, round two was orc buggies, which I beat. Round three was orc buggies, which I drew against. Round four was Admech, which I beat, and round five I lost because I made a movement stake against Death Guard. Um, uh, just just uh, before we go into the rest of it, what list were you running? Uh, that was my Caladius Venatari Sagittarium list that we showed so on the channel. We yeah, we have another video. Um, go back and check it. We actually talk about Gareth's um, evolution, really, of your Gustodes list from how it started at. Your, your dreadnought spam, if I remember yep. rightly, and then moved on, and and, and certain, um, I guess, decisions that led you yep. to where your list is now. Yeah, and then I went back to dreadnought spam. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was my gunline list that we showed on the channel previously, and pulling out a uh, three wins, one draw, one loss into that meta was pretty good. Yeah, um, the Death Guard player that beat me. Shout out to Greg Chamberlain. He's an amazing player. Um, uh, he actually lives not too far, so we're hoping to invite him to come and do a video with oh, us wonderful. soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what was he running then? Uh, he was running two Volkite Contemptor Dreads, three Plague Burst Crawlers, two Units of Spawn, some Pox Walkers, a bunch of Terminators, a bunch of characters. Yeah, so Spawn, fantastic for... Um, running around and holding objectives just because they're, they're cheap. You yeah. hit their one model often, so you can keep them out of line of sight. The right? Volkite Contemptors with the Tollkeeper Relic for the Exploding Sixes to hit. <sighs> Gareth! <laughs> Gareth! I know, when the book came out, I said it was bad. Who said it was wonderful, though? You did. So just, yeah. Yeah. Once in a while, um, I'm right, you know, guys. Um, I... At the time, I wasn't looking at what units it could be used on because it was only on core. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't adjusting for the Forge World book at the time. Sure. It's all right. It's all right. I, yep. This is my one victory. I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, so, yeah. After that, I went to the Battle of Britain with Team England that I applied for this year. Um, Congratulations on that, by the way, buddy. I'm still a hopeful. Uh, so... Uh, they're, they're starting to make cuts, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if I make the next cut. <laughs> well, I mean, e e even getting that far is really cool. Yeah, I mean, um, they, England took three squads to Battle of Britain against some Welsh teams, Scottish teams, and England got first, second, and third. Um, we uh, <laughs> Stephen Box led the team that got first. Uh, he's from Vanguard Tactics. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, amazing group of guys. And the second place team was led by Matt Robertson. Again, a great guy. Amazing with his sisters. Uh, I lost count on how many games he's won on the trot with his sisters now. 
Oh, is it aggressive? Uh, it's like 60. Oh. <laughs> oh. And, 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 you know, just going back to what we were talking about in our previous video, changes we would have maybe seen. Is it is he abusing that bodyguard rule a little yeah, bit? Yeah, he's using yeah. a unit of sacrosanct with Celestine and more than Barm. <laughs> um, but it was a team's event, which... So personal record matters less, but it's about how the team does. The whole team played really well together. It was a great experience, and I would gladly do more teams event. I'd love to see some more teams events run across the country. Like, even if it's not with Team England, teams events are amazing. Yeah, um, I didn't really understand until Gath explained it to me how they work, um, but I really, really like it. Um, to do with like the the who picks. Like yeah. an opponent for who? Maybe you can explain it for me. Yeah. So uh, at this event, it was teams of six. So it was um, one team puts forward a player, and the other team puts forward two players, and the team that put forward that player picks from those two for that matchup. Yeah. And it get, continues down the line until you've got all the matchups, and the whole aim for the captain in that situation is to try and get as many preferential matchups as possible yeah favorable yeah 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 Yeah. um i took my dreadnought spam to that event um mainly as a way to blunt the meta so basically i was a put forward list that you could put into the ad mech or the orc buggies and i could get close to a draw if not win that matchup cool um, and it did as intended that's awesome that's really cool um, so yeah, there, there's a, a little bit about, about how the um, the tournament selection works with teams. I think it's I think it's an awesome way of doing it. It's really. a great way to do it. It's just the amount of tables you need for the amount of teams is sometimes difficult for some places to run. Of course, yeah. Um, but it's a great way to play. If you get the chance to play teams, I'd say do it. I mean, you could really do it with with four people, right? Or even could you do it with less than four? I wonder. Um, Probably not. You could. I mean, five is probably the smallest I'd... Yeah. Okay. Um, just because of the way the pairings go and you, you want to have different matchups because part of being in the teams is you can only use each codex once across the whole team. So I took Custodes and Imperial Guard, which meant no one else in my team was able to use either of those books. That's that's another cool stipulation. I think that makes that really good. Yeah. Maybe one day. Maybe <laughs> yeah. one day I'll come and join you. Bye, um, but yeah, it was a great event. Uh, that was at Glasshammer in Telford. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful. <laughs> oh, I'm really, really chuffed for you. And then we've got some, some little guys down here. Yeah, so this was from the Goonhammer Open in Nottingham. Where big sorry, big shout out to Goonhammer. I use your um the blogs that you do on um, like new codex releases all yeah. the time. Really helpful. Great job. Yeah, uh, they're a team of great guys. Um, but I'll I'll get on to a couple of other things later. Um, so I, at the Goonhammer Open, I went four two um, with the Dreadnought spam list again. We're just kind of trying the teams list out in a singles event. Okay. And it performed pretty well. Um, I got best in faction for Imperium um, because it, um, like, there were best in factions done for like Space Marines, Ad Mech, and I was in Imperial Soup, so I got best in faction there. Okay. For best Imperial Soup player. Cool, cool. So, in the Goonhammer Open, uh, the two games I lost were. One against a Harlequins player with nine Star Weavers and nine units of troops. Pretty much a hard counter to what my Dreadnought list does. Um, not so much because he kills anything, because I am still pretty tough to kill. It's He denies me primary all game long, just by bodying me to contest with Star Weavers, and if I break them open he gets obsec. So I, I lose on primary in that matchup. Yeah, and um, his other... Uh... A slight Harlequins play here. You know, his 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 secondaries have got to be pretty easy as well, right? Because engage yeah. is a gimme you, for Harlequins. You should take Rod. You take engage, and stranglehold because he's denying me primary all game. Yeah, 
Nice. Well, no, if that's if he's not taking engage anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's get some really good secondaries into me and denies primary all game long. Oh, and of course, I mean, I mean, how many? How many? Just how many uh, dreadnoughts did he bring down? Uh, he killed five. I mean, so there's, there's points there and bring it down. Five points. Only five? Yeah, one point each for the small oh, dreadnoughts. Oh, because they're under ten, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a custodian's dreadnought is worth one point and bring it down. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right, carry on. Um, but yeah, and then the other game I lost was against Conrad. I've played him a couple of times now. And he's playing the Iron Hands with his um, character dreadnoughts being bodyguarded. That matchup, I kind of still feel that it's won and lost by who goes second, because whoever goes second starts with effectively a 20 point advantage in that matchup. Because if he goes second, he gets the extra five on um, Oath of Moment and maxes that out. Yeah. If he goes first, I can deny at least five on that. And whoever goes second in, a, in the missions that we played, gets the 15 primary at the end of the game. Mm. So again, it's a 20 point advantage to whoever goes second in that matchup, which both times I've played Comrade, I've gone first. <laughs> and he started with, with that 20 point effective lead. Be interesting to see if you play him again, what happens if... Uh, he's a great player and great guy to play against, um, but the matchup, it's not won and lost on that dice roll, but it makes it an uphill struggle for whoever goes first. Right. Right. And then last but not least, we've got the Coventry GT here. I went 5-3, and this little trophy here is for best of five wins. It was done path to victory. I won my first five games, one after the other. Then I hit the shark tank. And let me tell you, eight rounds over three days is exhausting. But... <laughs> yeah. It's also a three three two type thing. Huh? Three three two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um so My it, brain is frazzled after playing one game against <laughs> you, let me tell you that. So. <laughs> um but yeah, so won my first five games, then I hit the shark tank. We round six I hit Malik, who won the London GT mm -hmm. with his Admech. And really tough list. Really great, great player. Um, so was he using the, the six flyers? Uh, he was using three. Okay. But then he had three units of 20 rangers all as while we stand. And with the London GT terrain, he was able to either hide them or make them really tough to kill. So Lucius then? Uh, some Mars, some Lucius. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously like Lucius are the ones that can really, really make their um, big blobs of um, infantry hard to shift. Yeah. Then in round seven, I came up against Conrad again, and I went first again, which meant he had that 20 point lead. Again, great game, great player, but I think that matchup can change if I go second. Awesome, well, we'll try and make it happen one day. Hopefully I can make it happen at the next event. <laughs> <laughs> and then in my last round, I came up against Brody, who uh, I believe plays for Team Australia. Oh wow. Uh, with his Harlequins and Eldar soup. And it boiled down to me trying to kill a unit of warp spiders in my last turn to stop him getting rod. Right. Because um, he won by three points. If I'd, if I'd have denied rod, I'd have won by one. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it came down to can I kill a unit of warp spiders? I couldn't kill it. So he won the game. Yeah. I mean, those are the best games though, aren't they? But it's right down to the wire. In the it end. was the last movement in the game that won the game. It was so tight. Awesome. Right, so um, is there, because we're just talking about the tournament stuff today, is there any of the new changes from the, the, um, the balance update that you think would have made a dramatic impact on any of the matches you had? Um... So, a couple of times I've come up against Admech, and a few times I've come up against the Orcs. Uh, the Orc matchups, they kind of go away. Um, what do you mean changes. go away? 
because uh, it was either buggy spam or plane spam. Oh, so you think, yeah, so <laughs> yeah. They, they will now go away. Um, okay. So those lists are gone now. Right. And the Admech matchups, there was only really Malik using more than two planes. And Malik is a good enough player that he's going to adapt anyway. For sure. Okay. Um, and then with the changes, do you think there's room for some of the factions that benefited from the... Because obviously Admech Drakari got nerfed. Yeah, I mean, but some of the um, factions here have actually had some, some pretty powerful... But, yeah, I mean, okay. uh, the Imperial Guard are probably more relevant now. Like they they already stopped giving away as many secondaries with the changes to thin their ranks, bring it down. And their orders got better. The Lehman Russes have got slightly tankier. Uh, they're, they're more relevant again now. Um, the Chaos Knights and Knights are now a contender, in my opinion. Yeah yet to see what Tyranids are going to do to the meta, thanks to their new rules in Octarius. I really <laughs> hope there's a Tyranid Codex coming soon. I hope, I hope they're not just going to be sidelined and... Oh no, those new thing. Octarius rules have made them quite scary. Almost just for the Leviathan though, isn't it? A lot of it. Yeah, I mean, 18 Hive Guard is going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've already seen a couple of players talk... Uh, They've already just gone to the shelves like, oh, I've got 18 Hive Guard. I'm, I'm switching into Tyranids from Orcs. <laughs> like, so so what is it from the Octarius thing that makes um, Hive Guard better? Uh, I think there's a way to get like rerolls to hit, rerolls to wound, sixes explode, rerolls on damage oh, to your Hive Guard <laughs> with like hitting on twos. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> uh, I'll have... I, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it's something bonkers like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, Hive Hi Guard have always been pretty much what I would consider. Unless you're running like the big bug lists, I'd consider them an, an auto take. Yeah, like, like, you, so you could easily see 18 Hive Guard from some of the changes. Um, I'd have to have the book in front of me to go through it properly. Um, and I'm sure we'll do a video on that. I had a friendly little game against uh, one of my mates who's just learning. Um, to play 40k, so it was it was really like casual, um, but I played against his space horse, and it, it was a good list. And my God, let me tell you, the first thing I was surprised about is how hard it is to kill Bjorn. God <laughs> damn it! Well, Bjorn can get the bodyguard rule from company veterans. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just the fact that like so all all of the damage was reduced by one, and of course you know my my home yep. guard are uh, B3, aren't they? Um, and then uh, he's got the ignore ignore wounds on fives, and yeah. his toughness eight as well, which is not to be uh, underestimated. Um, through two rounds of shooting, because obviously you do the um, single single minded annihilation. I yeah. Say, um, he took five wounds. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> from from six hardware, well equivalent to twelve high but then... firing. If there was just a unit of two company vets there, that means you have to put the shooting into the company vets before you can even touch him. Yeah. It's... He's nasty. But let me tell you, the rest of the game, they were killing it. Uh, they took down um, Canis. They took down um, the other Dreadnought they have. Murderfang? Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they took out all kinds of um, assault intercessors for days. They, they did really well. They were the last things alive, obviously, because, you know, they're always at the back. But um, those guys are cool. Yeah, I mean, Space Wolves are probably the second, if not third, best Space Marines right now. Really? Yeah. Iron Hands are really holding it. Um, just because they can get that character dread and... Death Watch are so good into what was the meta. Really? Yes. Well, Death Watch were able to get plus one to hit anything that had fly, which meant they were good against the aircraft. Uh, right. They had the re-rolls against the Drukhari and the Orc matchups. Mm -hmm. um, and they could do Dread Spam like no one else. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right. Well, thank you for bringing... Um, all your, your prizes and your trophies and everything in. Um, it's really awesome to see um, how you've done. And also, you know, 
big thank you to Gareth because it, it, it's really great to have that um, insight into the competitive scene firsthand. Um, yeah, yeah great job, well, great job. Um, when you can get some time around work, I'm going to be dragging this one up to some tournaments as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm feeling just about ready. I have to say, like, um, we'll probably uh, we're going to going to be moving house soon. Uh, my girlfriend and I, so new studio will be on the way because that's a priority for me. Um, so we're going to have a nicer space to record in. Um, and then as soon as that's done, yeah, it's going to happen. Yep, that's great. That's... <laughs> awesome. So uh, we'll leave it there. We'll be back with uh, an all battle reports for you soon. And uh, from him and me, and of course, Biggie, we will see you later.